Hello all, my name is Krish Nayak and welcome to my YouTube channel. So guys, in this specific video, we are going to see that how you can learn and perform financial analysis using Python with the help of Mito library. Now this Mito library is super cool library which can actually help you to work with tabular data and do some amazing analysis. Jacob from the Mito team has actually created this specific video. So please make sure that you watch this video till the end and try to harness the power of Mito sheet in your use cases and in your problem statements. Mito is a spreadsheet that generates Python code for every edit that you make. Today, let's pretend that we're a financial analyst at Vanguard. We're going to build a report that looks at fund performance for the year 2022. To do so, I'm going to import some data. First, we're going to look at the fund info data. I'm importing just a CSV file to get started with. This has the fund name, the portfolio manager, and some additional data about each fund. Notice that Mito has started to generate the equivalent code for every edit that we make inside of the spreadsheet. That means as a Excel first analyst, I can take those skills and turn them into Python code just using Mito. The next thing I'm going to do is import some additional data. This time I want my fund performance data. This data lives in a database, and instead of having to write the SQL query to do it myself, I'm going to rely on Mito to do that for me. I'm just going to sign in with my username and password and tell Mito which year I want to look at data for. When I click the Import Data button, Mito is going to execute that SQL query for me and return the data into my spreadsheet. There's a bunch of different ways of getting data into Mito. So far, we've looked at CSV files and importing data from a database. But if you look at the Mito documentation, you can also import things like Excel files, as well as reading data from remote file systems, importing data frames, and importing data from other data sources that we haven't yet talked about. Now that I have this data, I can see that it has the date, the fund, and the month over month of returns. We're interested in building a report that looks at for each fund and each fund manager, what is the month over month return for each month. So to do so, I'm going to combine these two data sets. I'm interested in pulling over this portfolio manager column. I'm going to add a new column, just like I would in Excel, and call it fund manager. And then I'm going to use a VV lookup formula. Again, this is exactly how I would do this in Excel. I'm going to look at these two columns and perform that VLOOKUP. Again, Mito is generating the equivalent Python code for every edit, so I can just worry about building my analysis like I would in Excel and let Mito handle all of the Python thinking for me. One of the things that I notice is that some of these funds, for example, this one here has multiple fund managers. For this report, we want to see each individual fund manager on a new row. So to do that, I'm going to use a custom edit. I've built this custom function called separate row. And all I have to do is to tell Mito where, how I want to separate this row. We want to separate the fund manager and then I want to separate on a comma. When I click separate row on delimiter, it's going to break each one of those fields into a new row. This is an example of functionality that doesn't natively exist inside of Excel, but it can exist inside of Mito. Python is a really powerful and flexible programming language that allows you to express complex logic pretty simply. And Mito is an interface on top of that Python code that makes it even easier to work with. The next thing that we're going to do is create a pivot table. To do so, I'm going to click this pivot button. And what we want to look at is for each fund and for each fund manager, we want to see the month over month returns. But we don't want to just see the sum of the yearly month over month returns. Instead, we want to look at the month over month returns for each year inside of the month. So what we see now is for January 2022, the month over month returns, for February over 2022, the month over month returns, all the way for the, the full year. This is exactly the report that my manager wanted me to show them. 
So the next thing I want to do is clean up this report a little bit to make it easy to show my manager. To do so, I'm going to do a couple of things. First, I'm going to apply some conditional formatting. I'm going to add a conditional formatting rule to all of the month over month return columns. And let's say if the return is greater than zero, then we want to highlight this in a nice green color. And similarly, if the return is less than zero, let's highlight it in a red to make it stand out. That's a lot better. I feel like my manager is going to be able to understand that. But my manager likes things, likes to see things in Excel. So showing them that this view is probably not going to cut it. To do so, I'm going to export this as a Excel file. Let's call all this Vanguard Performance. I want it as an Excel file, and I want to export it with all of this conditional formatting. Now when I click the Generate Export Code button, it's going to add a new line of code to the bottom of my script that takes this ex this file that we've created and generates an Excel file. When I run that code, it's going to create a new file called the Vanguard Performance XLSX file. Let me open that and show you what that looks like. I'm going to download it. I have the exact same view that I had in my Mito sheet in Excel. This is ready to send to my manager. But before I send this to my manager, I think they're also going to want to see some of this data represented as a graph. I'm going to flip back to my Mito sheet and create a graph to send to my manager along with the Excel file. The graph that I want to show my manager is the average month over month performance for each fund. To create that information, I'm going to scroll all the way to the right of my data set, click the add column button, and create the average month over month. I'm going to use the average formula. And just like I would in Excel, I'm going to select all of the columns that I want to include in my average. This has calculated the average for the entire data frame, all 98 rows. So, so far what we've looked at using a VLOOKUP and average formula, but MITO supports a huge variety of formulas. If you look at the MITO documentation and look at our formula reference, you can see all about 100 formulas that MITO supports. It's all of the most common data cleaning, uh, string parsing, arithmetic, and date operating formulas. Now that we've created the average month over month column, the last step that we need to do before building the graph is actually deduplicate this data. Because we split the fund managers into multiple rows, if, the, if a fund had multiple fund managers, for example, this one here, we're going to see two entries for them, and that's just going to throw off our graph. To deduplicate the data, I'm going to click the data button. I'm going to click remove duplicates. And I'm going to select how do I want to deduplicate my data. And in this case, any time that the fund exists multiple times, we're just going to drop the first one. Deduplicating the data as easy as that, we've removed 12 duplicate rows from our data frame. Now that I've prepped my data, the last step is to actually build the graph. To do so, I'm going to click on the fund and the average month over month return column and select graph. Mito is going to start to build the graph for me. The last step that I want to do before calling this done is actually clean up the graph a little bit. Let's close that since we already have our data. And let's maybe rename this. Let's call this average month over month return. Since there's a lot going on in this graph, let's also maybe clean it up a little bit. I don't think we need to dis display the graph. Um, grid lines, instead of calling this fund, let's call this Vanguard fund. Perfect. So this graph looks really good to me. I think my manager is going to be happy with it. Because Plotly graphs like the one here are default interactive, I want to preserve this interactivity when I share it with my manager. 
To do so, I'm going to export this not as just a PNG file, but as an HTML file. When I copy the code and I scroll down to paste it here, I see that the output is creating an HTML file. So let me run the code and look at the HTML file. Perfect. So this is what the graph looks like. It's an HTML file that I can embed it in an email and my manager can scroll over the different data points and see the average month over month return. I'm going to save this. I'm going to put it in an email and send it to my manager. Let's do that now. Hey, Nate, just finished up the month over month report. Let me know if you want to see any changes. And then I'm just going to attach my files. Want the graph zero and then the Vanguard front performance. This is what the resulting email looks like. It has the full Vanguard fund performance Excel file, and it has the graph that we generated.